All right, y'all, while I was gone on vacation, um, this video dropped, dropped on July 21st. This was in the January 6th committee. Um, these are outtakes. So after January 6th, on January 7th, Trump had to come out and give a speech and be like, what happened was very bad and I am against it. Mm -hmm. um, so here's some outtakes or some bloopers from that speech. Let's watch and we'll, uh, we'll talk about it as we go here. Addressing the heinous attack yesterday, and to those who broke the law, you will pay. You do not represent our movement. You do not represent our country. And if you broke the law, you can't say that. I'm not going to. I already said you will pay. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol. Run that back a little bit. I wasn't paying attention. I was trying to get rid of that. Well, my clicker's being a little weird today. Those who there we broke go. the law. You will pay. You do not represent our movement. You do not represent our country. And if you broke the law, you can't say that. I'm not going to. I already said you will pay. The demonstrator. Can't say you broke the law. Can't say you broke the law, but there were a lot of people who broke the law. And by the way, uh, you know, they're paying the price. A lot of them had trials. A lot of them got locked up. Good. That's the way it should be. But he's hesitating on saying they broke the law. Why? Because we all know he likes the fact that they were, you know, aggressively supporting him, even if what they were doing was effectively attempting to do an insurrection. But really, it ended up being a riot with a bunch of absolute maniacs. This who infiltrated the Capitol have defied the seat of dust. It's defiled, right? See, I can't see it very well. OK, I'll, I'll do this. I'm going to do this. Let's go. But this okay, not gonna lie, this part is relatable. <laughs> As somebody who talks for a living, uh, there are times where I'm trying to say something and it, I stumble across it and sound like I have CTE. Uh, there are times where you're trying to read something and you misread it. This part is relatable, not gonna lie. This election is now over. Congress has certified the results. I don't want to say the election's over, I just want to say Congress has certified the results without. Look at this. You can tell he's wrestling with himself here. I think deep down he knew it's over. All of my attempts at overturning the results have failed. Over 60 plus court cases. Um, lost virtually every one of them. www.moveon.org. And um, he can't do it. It's, it's like Trump's mind is, has one goal. Ego protection. And that's what he's he's grappling with here. So he's trying to like, how do I save face by distancing myself from what happened without throwing them under the bus too aggressively and pissing off my strongest supporters? That's what he's wrestling with right here. Say the election's over, okay? But Congress is certain. Now Congress is Yeah, right. Now Congress is I didn't say over, so let, let me see. Go, go to the paragraph before. Okay? I would like to begin by addressing the heinous attack yesterday. Yesterday is a hard word for me. <laughs> Yesterday's a hard word? Look, I, I, I got some hard words, dog. Everybody knows I can't say rural. I used to say rural, and I got roasted for that. So then I started saying rural, and I've struggle with that like nobody's business randomly as i've gotten older i can't like i can't say the word ventura very well jesse ventura 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 um there's other ones too you guys know i got a whole list of them that i'm just i used to say oregon but people yelled at me and now i say oregon i don't know so there's but yesterday really that one's hard I, I, i've never heard that one before just take that the hands ah nice uh, good take the word yesterday because it doesn't work with the heinous attack on our country. Say, on our country. Want to say that? No. no, no. My only goal was to ensure the integrity of the vote. <laughs> My only goal was to ensure the integrity of the vote. <laughs> Why is that so hard? My only goal was to ensure the integrity of the vote. By the way, that's not at all what his goal was. But why was he angry about that one? I don't know. Is it because sometimes what happens... When you're public speaking, especially if you're reading, that's why I don't like reading stuff. You, you like to just talk. Is that 
you mess up the natural flow of the way it's written and meant to be delivered. And it seems like that's what he's doing right there. You guys know, like, the you know, when I filled in on breaking points for Sagar, which I've done a number of times, that we, they have the monologue portion of the show, which is like, all right, you're pre-written thoughts about a certain issue delivered in a way that's very coherent, a nice package. And, you know, Crystal's really good at writing those monologues and delivering them. Um, and then for me, when I did it, I was like, look, I'm going to do this the way I do it, which is I just have a couple bullet points and it's the the points that I need to land. But usually a bullet point is only a couple words to remind me of the general idea and then I can riff on it. And that's what I did on breaking points because I'm not a teleprompter guy, dog. I don't like reading a teleprompter. Uh, I, I feel like I would run into the problem, the thing Trump ran into here, which is like stumbling over your words or breaking up the natural flow of it. And it seems too prepackaged and delivered. So you got to keep it natural. You got to keep the flow going. I think that's what he's struggling with at the end. But look, apart from the, the delivery angle of it, the fact of the matter is the dude was clearly wrestling with himself about like, man, I want to say this is over. I don't want it to be over. I want to keep lying about the election. And whether or not he's lying and he knows he's lying or he's lying to himself too and convincing himself, no, 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 I actually won, that's open for debate. But either way, he didn't want to let it go. He didn't want to let it go. And so he had to walk this fine line of distancing himself from the many crimes that were committed and the extreme act that happened um, and not pissing them off too much because those are, without a doubt, his strongest supporters. And so, you know, he... Whether or not he walked that line appropriately is up to you, but obviously the January 6th committee here is diving into... Um, where was his heart really, and what were his intentions really? And, you know, we're getting some pretty clear answers on that. The fact that there was a memo within the White House talking about, you could just declare martial law and, like, seize the voting machines or some shit, that's kind of extreme. That's kind of extreme. The fact that he sat back for whatever it was, an, over an hour, and did nothing as he watched what happened, the fact that he threw Mike Pence under the bus, and, you know, the conversations behind the scenes with these assholes chanting, hang Mike Pence, and, and uh, Trump is like, well, you know, hey, they're not wrong type stuff. That's kind of crazy. That is kind of crazy now, isn't it? So anyway, there you have it. These are the outtakes. Um, I don't. At this point, a lot of the stuff in the January 6th committee is definitely substantive, and we're learning quite a bit. But it's also like now they're just sort of trolling Trump too, <laughs> like that. They're also doing that, and there's a good example of it here. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.